I bought this small brass planter secondhand decades ago and it's one of my favorite possessions. And while I don't normally draw still life type objects, I thought it was a nice little subject for an exercise in drawing and something that would be interesting for me as well to have a go at. Very simple shapes often are surprisingly difficult because there's nowhere to disguise a mistake. There just aren't that many lines in parts of the object or in the whole object where we can attract attention away from something that's not quite right. But besides the overall shape of the planter, the most interesting element is this frieze of roses that goes in a band right around the side of the pot. So the way I work out I'm going to draw it is I'll draw what I think is, is appropriate lines above and below that capture the width of the planter in the right proportion. And then I'm going to draw the three roses first because I need to make sure I position them in the right place and that I draw them with the right amount of distortion as they curve around on the left hand side in one direction and on the right hand side the other direction. And the same thing applies to the leaves and every other element, the buds that we have. And so because I've got the, the width of my planter, I position the center of each rose where I think it fits according to the reference. And then I draw the heart of the rose and then the petals. And then my plan will be that I will fill the gaps with the curling, trailing leaves and buds. I think this is the safest way to make sure everything positions in the right place because if I don't get the foliage correct then I run the risk that the roses will be too close together or too far apart and that will be a far more obvious mistake than I think any that I can make doing it this way. The other thing to pay attention to is where there's a, an edge, an indication of depth in some of the outline of these plants because we, we don't want them to look like they're a cartoon, a, a design drawn on the side. We want them to feel like they're pressed out. And I haven't quite worked out at this stage exactly what I'm going to do with hatching. I want to keep it fairly simple. I certainly don't want to be having to hatch to reflect all of the mirrored reflections in the various parts of the planter. If you'd like to have a go doing that, well, as always, you'll find this picture on my channel community page and you'll be able to have a go at that. But that's more than I want to do at this point. So I haven't yet decided, but I'm into the right hand side now and I'm again doing this the same way. I positioned the, the center of the rose and now I'm drawing the rose out. That black dot that you've seen me put on the right hand side, I did a similar one on the left hand side and that's where I think the the edge of the pot is going to be. That's where the most outer part, that's where I think the, the if you like, the side of the pot is going to be without any freeze coming out of it, without any relief coming out. So that's also just to help me to position that, that final piece that I'll draw in a moment. And I put a little bit of hatching to indicate, yep, see, so that, that gave me the edge of the pot and then I could draw the curve of the rose over it, out from it. And now just trying to squeeze in the very severely foreshortened bud and leaves. So once I've got this done, I've come to what for me is the more scary part of this picture. I never thought actually that, that would be anything but really interesting to draw. But now I have the longer straighter lines and curves to try and get into a pattern with what I've drawn. So this line curves up just a little too much, I think, in the center. But I think any effort to try and kind of change it too much will actually um, count against it or the top of the frieze could have actually arched up slightly more. That would also have been a way to overcome it and maybe I should have actually done that because that does have more lines. I didn't think of doing that just to mitigate the visual impact of what I've done but this is the the uh, challenging part now. You saw me doing a, a dry run if you like to try and build the correct muscle memory 
to do this. There is a flat bottom on this and that's as good a line as I'm ever going to get and then I make it not quite as good by going over it. So I do decide now to put some hatching to indicate the colour more than the reflections and shadow. So I do my hatching lines going straight across and as you can see I decide to do horizontal lines because I think they're going to work the best for my ability to control how they look at the end. I do a little bit of additional hatching to the left hand side because there is some darker shadow reflection there and I feel just a little bit will help to give a more sense of a bowl shape. Now you might notice I've gone all the way across and now I'm going at a slight angle upwards and in another moment you'll see me go at a slight angle downwards and when I want a generally horizontal band of lines keeping them all absolutely horizontal doesn't always work very well. It is hard to fill every gap without end ending up with some parts too dark. So I find that going at an angle, slight angle, still looks horizontal. It doesn't detract from that sense of this, these are horizontal lines, but the angle simply means that more of this, the gaps between the lines I've drawn that I want to fill actually get filled in a more reliable way. So I hope that's made sense. I'm now doing just a little bit more hatching to indicate some darker parts of the frieze to give us a, a stronger three-dimensional feel to it. I really should have polished it before I started, but I thought it might have let the flowers not be as clear. So now I'm doing this line at the other angle you saw me do there. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you have a go drawing it. But whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.